If I were to ask you what focus mode should I use if my subject is walking toward me, are you able to answer that question? Okay, how about this one? If I'm shooting portraits, how do I retain as much skin detail as possible so that I can skin retouch later in post? Here's a simple one. What is shutter speed and how does it affect my photos? Were you able to answer any of these questions? In today's video, I wanna talk about the secret to taking better photos, but also some things that I've noticed and some things that I've learned shooting alongside other professional, talented, and amazing photographers over the past couple years. A couple weeks ago, I was at the Profusion Expo that happens every year in Toronto. And while I was there, one of you guys, a subscriber, came and asked me, how do I get my photos to look so good? And how are they able to take better photos. I thought this was a perfect question to answer in this video because it is a question that I get asked all the time. How do you take better photos? I believe the secret to taking better photos is a lot of things. It's the proper lighting, it's composition, it's when to take the photo, the time of day. There's lots of things that go into taking a good photo, but when I really look at it and I look at all these talented photographers that I know, myself included, we all have one thing in common and that's knowledge. Knowledge of how lighting works and how it affects your photo. Knowledge of which camera settings to use at which time. Knowledge of composition and how to frame their subjects. How to tell a story with their images and evoke emotion. Knowledge of which lenses and focal lengths to use. Which filters should you use. Even comes down to knowledge you have in your photo editing software. What each adjustment does to your photo. Many photographers pick up their first camera and they just think they already know how to use it because you just click a button and it's so easy. So they never take the time to learn. They go out, they shoot photos, they might get one or two that they like, they'll slap on a filter and post it to social media and then they'll realize why their photos don't turn out like their favorite photographers. And the truth is a lot of photographers don't go out and just sporadically take photos. A lot of these great photos that you see are actually planned. Planned in the sense that they know which time of day they wanna go and shoot it to get the best photo or the photo that they're envisioning in their head. And even when they do go and shoot photos that aren't planned, they have that library of knowledge that they can go back to and make any situation or make a good photo out of anything. To give you an example, I was shooting a portrait session the other day and the client wanted a harsh flash look. And so I started planning out the shots. I was thinking about which focal length I should use and which camera settings I should shoot at all while I was driving to the location. I wasn't even there yet. I started thinking, well, what if the lighting isn't right and the look is not exactly how I envisioned? How am I gonna deal with this? I have to increase my shutter speed to make the scene look darker and then I can increase my flash intensity to expose my subject brighter. And that's how I'm gonna make that look appear stronger. Or when I took these portraits, I already had the shot and everything planned. I knew that I wanted to get a shot of the carousel spinning behind her and I wanted my subject completely still. So as I was heading to the location, I was already planning how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna shoot with a slower shutter speed. I might need to use an ND filter if it's not dark enough, just so I can get the shot that I envisioned in my head. Some of these are very simple things and simple things that every photographer can learn, but a lot of photographers don't. Planning and knowing what settings I'm gonna use before I even get to the shoot is one of the things that helps me take better photos or take the best photos every single time. The good thing is knowledge comes with practice. The more practice, the better and the more knowledgeable you become. Now sure, everyone learns differently. There's definitely those hands-on photographers who would much rather learn from their mistakes or make a mistake and learn from it and then there's photographers that would actually study and learn everything beforehand. That way they don't have to make mistakes. I say this all the time, but when I first started out in photography, I used to watch video after video and read tons of articles, camera settings, 
focus modes, lighting, trying to learn everything because I was afraid to make a mistake in front of other people. So I never even scheduled a shoot or even shot with my friends until I knew exactly how to operate my camera without even looking at it. Mostly because I didn't want to embarrass myself. Now, the more knowledgeable you are, the better photos you're gonna take, period. If I wanted to go shoot astro photos, something I don't know how to do, and I asked my friend Rich for tips or for advice, he would tell me everything. There's a rule pretty much that 500 divided by the focal range, 300 divided by the focal range is the real. All the camera settings to use, how to frame up the Milky Way, the time frame or the amount of time we have to actually take the photo, how to later take that photo and comp it in post. He just knows everything there is to know about astrophotography. This is all knowledge that he possesses that allows him to take amazing astro photos. It's also what allows him to get to a location, set up and start taking photos while I'm still fiddling around with all of my camera settings. The best photographers then use all of their knowledge to help them plan. Planning your shoot or planning a shot is one of the best ways to make sure you're getting the shot that you envisioned in your head. The planning process for me typically starts with a vision or something that I want the shoot to be. And then I look for a location. Then I go out and actually scope that location and make sure everything's perfect. Then it comes down to figuring out lenses and what focal length I want to actually shoot at. Do I want the wider look? Do I want to capture more environment in my shot? Or do I want to shoot with a tighter lens so I can get a lot more compression and kind of eliminate the background? On the day of the shoot, while I'm driving to the location, I'm typically looking out the window, looking at the weather, looking at the lighting, and figuring out which camera settings and what I should do to deal with the natural light. Again, these are all things that I plan out beforehand to make sure that I'm getting the best shots while I'm there. So the secret to taking better photos is to learn what makes up a good photo. And then you'll be able to pull from what you know and still make a good photo of any situation you're in. So what are some things that you should go out and learn and study so that you can start taking better photos today? I have a list. Every photographer should study lighting and how lighting affects your photos and also how to manipulate light and use it to your advantage. You should stop shooting in automatic and learn everything you need to know about the exposure triangle. Study the exposure triangle so much that you're able to think of settings before you even get to the shoot. Enough that you can adjust your settings on the fly without even thinking or even looking down at your camera. I actually made a video on the exposure triangle and how to easily shoot in manual so definitely go check that out you should learn compositions and how to frame your subject learn how to create depth in your images how to tell a better story how different lenses affect your photos differently when should you use a circular polarizer filter when should you use an ND filter learn your different focus modes when to use one over the other it might sound overwhelming but I can guarantee you if you just watch a couple videos you'll get the general understanding of how things work okay you guys definitely got a longer version than the answer I gave him at Profusion, but I really want to make this video because I think it's something that a lot of photographers should hear. It's not your camera. It's not your lenses. If your photos aren't looking like your favorite photographers, it's maybe because you just don't know how to capture that like they do. If you found this video helpful, make sure to click that like button. It does go a long way in helping the channel grow and getting this video seen by a lot more people who may need the help. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. And I got to finish packing because I have a trip to Iceland coming up in just a couple days. So I'll see you in the next one.